Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Architect Talk, how to read architectural plans. Today we're going to look at an electrical plan. This is a pretty simple duplex project. I did a full architectural review of these plans in another video. I will add the link here. And today we're going to review the electrical series, which in this case, this is a very small and simple project. So this should, this should be a pretty straightforward video. Um, shouldn't take too long here. So with the electrical plan, we're pretty far along in this set, right? This isn't a big set to begin with, but if this is a book, the electrical series is towards the end of the book, as are most engineering drawings. So I just want to quickly flip to the front to give you guys some context if you haven't already seen my architectural review. So if you look at this drawing index, our electrical plans are going to be all the way in the back, back here. Okay. Um, you can reference uh, the, the drawing title and where the drawing is going to be located in the drawing index, which will either be on the cover sheet or the second page of the set. really depends on um, the architect and how they like to lay out the plans. But yeah, so we're going to look right here. We're going to flip to E1 and E2. We're only going to review E1, which are the plans. Um, perhaps I'll do another series reviewing the, um, the riser diagram. But for right now, we're just going to go over the architectural plans. Okay. So let's just jump right into it. So what you're looking at is a duplex, the floor plan of a duplex. This is the demising wall, which separates unit A from unit B. So there's a limited amount of architectural information. Right off the bat, we're going to notice there's doors, there's windows, there's walls. And that's about it. Um... We need this level of architectural information just so that we can locate all of these items within the building um, relative to, to these elements, okay? So all of our electrical symbols are going to be noted in this legend. So every symbol you see here is going to be referenced right here. If you're not sure what anything looks like, um, I'll blow this up so it's a little bit bigger. These symbols are pretty industry standard. Um, so we have a duplex receptacle, which is an outlet. We have, um, we have a, a light switch, which is this little money symbol. A two-way switch has a money symbol with the three. Um, exhaust fan. These are all symbols that no matter what job you're working on, they're mostly going to be the same. Wall sconce here. Um, yeah, so this is, like I said, this is all pretty industry standard stuff. So let's zoom in on one of the spaces and just kind of look at it in detail. So let's take a look at this bedroom. One of the first things you'll notice are, um, these are recessed light fixtures in the ceiling. We know that because, again, if we come down here and we reference to the legend, <clears throat> we're gonna see ceiling or wall mounted, oh no, it's carbon dioxide. We're gonna see four inch recessed can lights, C-spec architectural plans. So it's gonna be like, a, the, like the no smoking symbol, it'll be a circle with a dash through it. So that, boom, is right here. So we can see where all these are laid out. Um, sometimes on the architectural ceiling plan, these will be dimensioned. Quick, let's see if, uh, let's see if they're dimensioned here. Okay, no, they're not dimensioned, but they're still shown. So, um, yeah, where it says, see architectural spec, on that note, that's basically telling you that um, the architectural plans are gonna show the same amount of information, but they might go into further detail as to the actual product. Um, so RC1, that's pointing to here, again, four inch recessed can lights. But I believe this project has sheet specs, which are on the following sheet. <clears throat> yeah, see, so sometimes the architectural spec will not be on the sheet uh, sometimes they'll be in a spec book, which is like like a Bible. It's like a huge, thick book. Um, but in this case, all the products that the contractor is going to have to purchase are, are laid out here. Um, sometimes they'll be tagged, again, like coordinated with, with the naming convention that we just saw before. But um, these are the only recessed lights, it appears. So, you know, it's safe to assume that um, these guys are the ones that they're talking about. Okay. So... So they're not dimensioned, but um, still a good, good layer of information to know. OK, 
okay? So let's go back to this bedroom. So we have, uh, so we have our recessed lights here and this little dashed line, if you trace this back, it's gonna lead you to a switch. So it's either gonna lead you to a, a typical regular switch or a two-way switch. As we said before, the two-way switch is gonna have the three symbol. Um, but basically, the regular switch, you could flick it on and then this dashed line is gonna show the route to each of these fixtures that it corresponds to. Similarly with a two-way switch, is there one here? So a two-way switch, there's one right here in the backyard. Um, if we flick this on, we trace the light, it's gonna go to this B15 light. That looks like it's a, it's a wall sconce, see? Wall mount, exterior LED. So it's gonna go there and it's gonna work its way all around the building. So this is some type of landscape lighting and it's gonna come back here to the foyer. So you can flick this light on in the front or in the back. That's what a two-way switch is. And again, this dashed line is giving you the path. Okay, so that's lights. I mean, that's lighting. You're gonna see that language all throughout the rest of the drawing and on any other project you work on. Uh, similarly, if you flick a light switch, it can take you to other types of fixtures, such as a ceiling fan. It can take you to a uh, exhaust fan right here over the toilet. It could take you over to, uh, what's this? Low profile recessed light fixture for wet locations. So they're distinguishing that this is a fixture for wet areas, obviously the shower, um, which has to be probably uh, rated, maybe it's IC rated. Um, so this has to be distinguished to be different than the rest of the typical fixtures that we're using. Okay, but the money symbol is the light switch and it's gonna, you can, anything that you would use, you would flick on a light switch in, in real life too, to control even a garbage disposal, okay? So that's the lights. Um, same thing goes for outlets. Oh, hey, I'll, I'll mention real quick. Since this is a duplex, uh, you'll notice that the naming convention on this side is A and this side is B. So we have B1 fixture, we have an A1 fixture. Essentially, it's the same type of fixture, but in the plan, we're just distinguishing that, you know, it's for side B as opposed to side A. That's kind of specific to this project, but just in case you were wondering what, what that meant, okay? So as we work our way down, what are some more symbols that we're seeing? We're seeing the outlets, okay? The outlets, which are the duplex receptacles. Uh, again, out, uh, receptacle with GFI. These are gonna be for wet locations, such as sinks in the bathrooms, um, countertops in the kitchen. Refer to your, your local code, um, which is going to tell you exactly the requirements of where these need to go. That's not really the purpose of this video. I'm just telling you what it is. So got our GFIs here in the kitchen. Um, we got a few over here on this little island and that's basically it when it comes to the, when it comes to the, um, the receptacles. Okay. Again, we can continue to work our way down. We're going to see more different types of light fixtures in the kitchen. So here we have, this is like an under cabinet, uh, linear light. We're going to trace this right here. LED surface mount strip light. See specs for architectural plans. We're not gonna flip back to it, but again, if you wanna see the actual product, we're gonna go back to that specification sheet that's gonna tell you exactly what the product is that they're going to purchase, okay? Um, what's this in the closet? AHU, that's a universal label for air handler unit. So this is the mechanical closet where the unit is gonna go. I'd imagine there's gonna be a louvered door so that you have you know, airflow that's kinda of out of the scope of this video, but here we have uh, the panels, okay? Panel A, panel B, electrical panels, which are in the garage. Um, one thing I also haven't discussed is what are these numbers? So aside from the fixture being determined uh, for unit A versus unit B, there's these numbers here. So B31, B5, B1, that is telling you where all of these fixtures are routing to the electrical panel, okay? <clears throat> So we're not gonna go into this sheet in too much detail, but um, this is showing the breakdown of how the panel is going to get assembled. And you can see here, um, these numbers are the numbers that correspond to the fixtures that we were just looking at. Okay, so B1, that's gonna take you here to B1. And now you can see it'll give you, um, give you a bunch of information about, about those items and it'll even tell you the location. So master bed, lights and receptacles okay so that look at that nice looking panel you don't have to ask any questions about it um 
These are, uh, these are notes. These are your electrical notes, which maybe they should be on the, on the other page, but that's okay. Um, basically, these are general notes for the contractor um, that spell out certain code items or anything that, that needs to be um, referenced you know, to, to the contractor. Um, these can be for quality control purposes. They could be CYA notes or cover your butt notes um, from the architect or the engineer. We could read a few here just to, uh, just to show you. All electrical and communications outlets to be at 16 inches AFF. That means above finished floor, unless otherwise noted vertically mounted. Again, these notes have to be here just in case you have, you know, a couple less experienced guys to be nice <laughs> going out there and just doing things that are blatantly wrong. These notes will typically be, mostly they'll be boilerplate. Sometimes they'll be tailored to the project. Really, they should mostly be tailored to the project. I know a lot of contractors might get mad at me <laughs> for saying what I just said, but um, yeah, it again, the boilerplate notes are going to spell out simple things like that. And sometimes there are going to be more specific items that are tailored for this specific project. <clears throat> okay, so let's go back. And as we work our way down the plan, I mean, everything that we just discussed applies everywhere else. I mean, any other symbol that you can find here is going to be referenced here. Um, some of the abbreviations, this is, again, more industry standard stuff. But remember, we said about the mounting height needs to be AFF above finished floor. If there's ever a if there's ever an abbrevi abbreviation that you're not familiar with or you've never heard before, you'll almost always be able to reference it on this sheet or another sheet. Those things are always spelled out somewhere. Okay. So finally, at the bottom of the page, we have this is just the title of the drawing: Electrical Power and Lighting Plan. It gives you the scale, which corresponds to this item. This is a architectural scale. So you see quarter inch equals a foot. So this, <clears throat> so you see quarter inch equals a foot down here. What does that mean? That's the scale of the drawing. So if we blow this up to a 100% scale, that's gonna be the size of the actual building. But the whole purpose of a scale is to reduce the building down to something that we can put on paper and quantify in a smaller, in a smaller drawing. So these are all your scales here on the right side, okay? And on the left, so if it's a if it's a three eighth scale, you're going to read it from right to left, zero two four six. If it's a three quarter scale, you're going to read it left to right, zero one two three four. In this case, it's a quarter inch scale, so we're going to locate that, and that is that is right here. Sorry about the neighbor's dog barking. Um, so if we wanted to measure, say for instance, you know this wall. I'm gonna take my quarter inch scale, gonna line it up. I'm gonna say, okay, this is approximately 13 feet. See, see how I did that? Gonna pull it up right there to 13 feet. Great, okay? So that's what the title and the scale mean. Um, title block I've reviewed in, in other projects, but essentially the purpose of the title block is to provide generic information about the architect or the engineer. It'll have the project title, the client, the address, um, and your drawing number is down here, which again gets referenced onto the cover sheet. Okay, so that was a simple review of electrical plans. I uh, hope you enjoyed. If this was valuable information, please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, it really helps me out a lot and allows me to continue doing these videos. So uh, yeah, if there's a specific topic you wanna to review, please comment down below and we will continue to review these. How to Read Architectural Plans. Thank you for joining. My name's Matt. See you soon.